Missouri Valley Conference. The Lukies may be struggling now, but they are getting set to try to turn things around against arch rival Creighton tonight. Coming up on College Game Day, two unbeaten teams remain. How the Patriots have had a major influence on the way Memphis looks at being perfect. And North Carolina is no longer perfect, but how much do the Tar Heels have to change if they want to dance all the way to the national title? And we'll bring you the tallest tale in all of college basketball. A behemoth in the middle, and we are ready for a giant-sized house party in Carbondale right now. NCAA tournament. Three different teams the last two years have made it at least to the Sweet 16. What importance do you place on the fact that they, they go places like this and have to survive? Well, this is what the rest of the country doesn't understand. Because this is why you see those 12-5 upsets in the first round, and you see second round upsets because this condition of playing Creighton against Southern Illinois. They gear up, and they have no fear when they go up against the big guys. I think in this league, it's as hard to get a win on the road as any league in the country. When you come to Carbondale, you leave with a loss and probably bronchitis. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at this building. I mean, 44 years old. The fans are right on top of you. And Clyde Frazier played here. Big time. I thought you'd walk in in a fur coat or something. <laughs> you guys still haven't answered the most important question. What is a Saluki? It is the royal dog of Egypt. And it has been said that it can cover a three-mile course faster than any other land mammal. Probably not that particular Saluki, but one like it. From one breed of dogs to another one as we get ready for Saturday's slate. Gonzaga's Bulldogs going in to take on number one Memphis. Yeah, the Zags are not in the top 25, but they should be. They've won six games in a row. They play everybody in the country, and for the first time all year, they're 100% healthy. They got a big-time point guard in Jeremy Pargo, and they have the size and talent to give Memphis maybe their first loss of the season. Look at what goes on with Washington State and Arizona State. Washington State has two great guards that are seniors that have started together for four straight years with Kyle Weaver and Derek Lowe. But Derek Lowe was only two for nine, five points in the Arizona loss the other night. He's got to find 27 points like he did against Oregon. But the other big guy in the paint, Aaron Baines, he's got to play tough and get a double-double. Georgetown at West Virginia. The Hoyas have a blue blood offense, but they've got blue-collar defense, and they're glue guys. 
Jesse Sapp, Patrick Ewing Jr., Jeremiah Rivers. They get loose balls. They bring toughness. West Virginia hasn't scored 70 on Georgetown in their last six. They've got to knock down some threes, especially Alex Ruoff. Ole Miss at Mississippi State. Mississippi State is the only undefeated team in the SEC. They got the best player in the conference with Jamal Gordon, a guy that can dominate on the perimeter and down low on the post. And don't think about getting points in the paint. Jarvis Bernardo leads the country in block shots at five per game. Wisconsin at Purdue. That's going to be a big one today. When you look at Bo Ryan, he's got to get this pregame talk and remind these guys how they won at Texas. They got it done there. They can get it done today in West Lafayette. Brian Butch has got to get a big double-double. But Micah Flowers with that big three to win the game at Texas. Watch him to step up and get it done. Connecticut traveling to Bloomington to take on Indiana. IU is 12-0 at home behind D.J. White, who's had nothing but double-doubles, and Eric Gordon averaging over 22 points per game. UConn is without Jerome Dyson and Doug Wiggins, who have been suspended. Who's going to guard Eric Gordon? That's going to be a dilemma for Jim Calhoun. And they've had a dilemma guarding perimeter guys all year. And the Big East, as we've discussed, maybe there's not a truly elite team in that league. Georgetown is the only one with fewer than two conference losses. UConn was coming off that road win against Cincinnati, and they still are. But now they're having to deal without Dyson and Wiggins. One of the things you look forward to on Saturday is how do the Huskies respond? Well, and how they're going to guard Eric Gordon. You lose Jerome Dyson, who is their most athletic and most explosive player on the perimeter. But more so than just basketball, losing the continuity that that team had. They were on a real upswing, beating Marquette, winning a really tough game at Cincinnati. This really knocks them back a bit. But after this game, they get back in a conference play and that's more important because when you look at the Big East at the top who are the four number one seeds that get a bye in the Big East Conference Tournament this is where Connect can still respond and this is why I think yeah do what you got to do against IU today but get refocused to what you do in your conference to get a seed where you don't play in that first round yeah but you look at UConn they have struggled to shoot the ball from the perimeter their best jump shooters are Jerome Dyson and Doug Wiggins Wiggins has been lights out over the last four games and again who's gonna guard Eric Gordon coming back from beating Marquette and then on the win uh, on the road against Cincinnati this is going to be a tough game at Indiana. You know that is one of the things we'll watch for today UConn missing guys when USC plays Oregon tonight the Trojans will have OJ Mayo. Mayo's been involved in that ticket flap after being given tickets to a Nuggets Lakers game by Carmelo Anthony. He's been reinstated. He's repaid the $460 to charity now. What do you think of the way this entire thing went down? You know I think it's ridiculous because they were comp tickets. I mean you look at OJ Mayo he actually used the tickets. He didn't sell them and to make them pay $462 as a college student is absolutely ridiculous. This is where the NCAA sometimes they just got to use common sense. This should have never gone this far. I know look at it Jay that look this kid's not being recruited by Carmelo Anthony to go to Syracuse he wants to see an NBA game yeah Carmelo Anthony he's got to pay the taxes but for this kid to give it a charity I think that's wrong well it, it's more of the NCAA being hamstrung by their ridiculous and antiquated rules on amateurism those guys are friends for him to have to pay close to $500 to charity why isn't he giving the money to the Lakers who were the ones that gave the comp tickets in the first place you know they're punishing a kid and what I object to is they're making him look like a criminal for nothing and the members of the selection committee, the NCAA selection committee, they're flying all over the country. They're taking comp tickets. I don't see them giving money to charity and paying for those tickets. Why is it okay for them? Well, we'll see uh, what impact it has, if any. O.J. Mayo has said that he was going to try to observe every rule it has since he's been at USC. He obviously under the microscope with his high level of recruitment, but he will be able to play when the Trojans take on Oregon tonight. Southern Illinois and Creighton. Perhaps the most intense rivalry in the Missouri Valley Conference. Let me tell you, these two hate every wretched breath that the other one sucks into their greedy lungs. And while they may not be at the top of the valley right now, these two have combined to win six of the last seven valley titles. However, there has been a bit of a power shift. What has precipitated that and what impact will it have for the rest of the way? And the biggest story, literally, in all of college basketball. Where do you see Kenny George and what he has to do just to get a good night's rest? And everybody's sleeping easily for Memphis. They're undefeated. Hey, go! Motion three!